hello, dear foodie friends, and welcome to Kitchen Chat. I'm your host, Margaret McSweeney, and I'm so glad you're joining me today in the beautiful Middleby Residential Showroom in the a and Building in New York City. I'm here with my co-host and favorite <laughs> chef, <laughs> Chef Jamie Lorita. Thank you, Margaret, for having me here in our second showroom for Middleby Residential here in New York City. And I am so thrilled. We are both so thrilled and honored to be here today with truly a legend, a master of hospitality, oh, Drew Nieperunt, <laughs> who needs no introduction. You've heard of Nobu, Tribeca Grill, everything. He is the founder of the Myriad Restaurant Group and is just making the world a delicious place. Yes. So welcome to years. Kitchen Chat. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and we met, just some background on this, Drew, I don't know if you remember when we first met. It was in 2015 at the IACP oh. celebration for Chef Jacques Pepin's 80th oh, birthday fantastic. in Washington, D.C. Washington, yes, and I'll never forget, all of the great chefs were getting on the stage. And I could tell you wanted a picture. And remember yeah. I said, Drew, would you like me to take a picture? Oh, and and I took that picture for you. And, yeah, I, and I, I have about 28,000 pictures in my phone, so you, thank you for doing that. <laughs> I, I, and the people freak out when I show them the pictures. They, they, they love the pictures. Oh, good. Well, but that's I, just. I, every picture tells a story. It's true. You know, it sometimes you catch a, something very unique, and uh, it's fantastic. And, Great. And you have so many stories to yes, share, and do, this is actually. just <laughs> such an honor. And the first story is, if you could share with our viewers and listeners where you were earlier today and came from. Yeah, um, I guess it's the 18th year of the Tribeca Film Festival. So it, um, it started very small, but it was um, Robert De Niro and his partner Jane Rosenthal, you know, after 9-11, they were um, being motivated to do something downtown. And uh, they, had, they had explored the idea of doing a film festival, but then they put it into action. And the thing is just, you know, it's taken off tremendously. We do a jurors luncheon because they have a, a group of people who are jurors. And the jurors tend to be very celebrated actors and actresses. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it was a lunch for about 130. 130. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg and Alec Baldwin and Billy Crystal and Deborah Messing and actually Aaron Rodgers was there, the quarterback for the, I don't know what he was doing there, but he was there. Um, <laughs> and quite a, quite a number of people and it was, it was a terrific uh, afternoon. But of course I, I came up here because I wanted to be with you. Oh, thank you. This <laughs> is All just because so you took that picture, Margaret. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and IACP as exactly. well, wonderful. And I, I, if I recall, Jack McPan actually had had a stroke. Yes. And he couldn't make it. Uh, but I saw Jacques uh, at his, they did a foundation dinner for him. It must have been about three weeks ago. It was fantastic. They had uh, Jose Andres and uh, uh, Gabriel Croyfer cooked and Le Cuckoo, uh, Daniel Rose. Uh, the food was great over on, it's not far from here actually. So Drew, do me a favor and dial it back a little bit. Yeah. Go, let's go back to like almost the beginning of when you were maybe manifesting this reality. As a young man, I'm As 29 it, years old. Yeah, how did it begin, and what were you? What were you? What were your dreams? Well, <clears throat> I grew up here. I grew up in Manhattan. In fact, as I was walking here, 58th Street, there was a terrific restaurant that my father used to take me to, uh, right on 58th between uh, Second and First, called uh, Pols. It was a fellow by the name of Paul Steinler, and he was a Czechoslovakian, but he cooked the most marvelous food you've ever eaten in your life. But the point was my father had worked for the State Liquor Authority, licensing restaurants in the 60s and 70s. I was a, you know, 8, 10, 12. My father started taking us out to restaurants. Uh, he got to know the restaurateurs. And it was like a kid in the candy store. I just got turned on by the whole theater of dining out. I mean, hundreds, literally, French restaurants, uh, Chinese restaurants, Italian restaurants. And these people were right off the boat. They didn't really understand the machinations of getting a liquor license. So. My father helped them, and they were indebted to him. They invited us in for dinner. And, you know, I guess if, you're, if you grow up in a house with a piano, you, you're going to gravitate to music. I gravitated to food, you know, and I huh. started reading Julia Child and watched the Gra Galloping Gourmet. And uh, my first opportunity really became at McDonald's. I worked in 1972 when I was in high school. Then I got into Cornell Hotel School. Then at 18, I worked on a first-class cruise liner, a 600-seat passenger ship, uh, 
you know, you work breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Sure. You know, it was, it was all decoration, but um, I always wanted to open my own restaurant. And finally, in 1985, 30, what was that, 39 years ago? No, no, 30, uh, 34, 35 years ago, we opened Montrachet with David yes. Boulay, very yes. uh, talented young fellow, and we got three stars with a $16 menu. Wow. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, Do uh, Robert De Niro was a customer. Would you ever want to do another restaurant in Tribeca? I said, are you talking to me? Because <laughs> you And you know, we opened the Tribeca Grill five years later in 1990. That's now 29 years. Sean Penn, Bill Murray, Mikhail Baryshnikov, Lou Diamond Phillips, Edward, Ed Harris, Christopher Walken, all our partners. I mean, that restaurant's done tremendously. And then in 1994, perhaps one of the most audacious uh, restaurant things that ever happened in America is Nobu. Yes. You know, Nobu Matsurisa, there are now over 50 Nobus around the world, Nobu That's hotels, incredible. Nobu, Nobu everywhere. Um, we just celebrated 26 years of Nobu. So, I mean, it's, I've, I've had a terrific career. I've done, all, you know, I, over the 40 years, I've opened about 40 different restaurants. The, the Nobus are in excess of that. Um, you know, I had restaurants in San Francisco, Martha's Vineyard, Boca Raton, Florida, Moscow, I mean. I've been around uh, quite some time, so it's been great. And you were the first bi-coastal restaurant tour. I, you know, I think for, uh, at, at the time, in 94, nobody was kind mm -hmm. of doing what I was doing. I think people looked at me and they said, yeah, he's not that smart, we can do what he does, you know, but <laughs> back then you could do it and make money. Today, the restaurant business is a little different. It's a little harder to hit today. Yeah. I'll never forget, I was in South Beach and um, had the honor of meeting Chef Nobu. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. just lovely. He uh, was in town. There was a movie, the Robert De Niro documentary with That's Ellis fun. Island. Oh, okay, came very out. good. Yeah, oh, okay. so the, good. there was the, the debut of that. Sure. And, yes. yeah, we've been partners since 1994. Uh, you know, Nobu started in 1987 in a small little place on... Uh, La Cienega Boulevard, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> from that restaurant, you know, once we opened Nobu in 94, it just took off tremendously. And then we went to London in 97, and London basically broke open a lot of doors. I mean, um, there are now three Nobus in London. Short, oh, I didn't know that. Park Lane, Barclay Square. Hmm. But people, you know, it's, it's, it's a lifestyle decision. They, they want Nobu in their life, so it's yeah. yes. pretty amazing. So as far as like building a restaurant and designing a restaurant, I design the showrooms for, and I'm also a chef for Middleby, and the equipment I'm sure in the restaurant, you probably use Middleby equipment. We own Blodgett, Jade, no, Pitco. Oh, you have gorgeous things here. Thank you. Yeah, so it, as, far as, um, as far as the team behind, behind you, talk to us about that. Take us like a behind well, the mean, scenes. You know, in, in terms of the Nobus, uh, David Rockwell, uh, used to call me up. Uh, he was an unknown architect, and he, he's, you know, he wanted to work on something. And I know he had done a sushi bar, so I was like, I got to get this guy off my back. I, you know, <laughs> so I, I threw him a bone. He did the 105 Hudson Street, which was our first Nobu, and he did an amazing job. I mean, it, and so he's been our collaborator now on the vast majority of the Nobus, and um, you know, he, he always he always delivers the goods. I think. You know, sometimes when you have a great success in the restaurant mm -hmm. business, you try to figure out who's the person responsible or what led up to that success. But in the in the case of Nobu, it's it's a lot of little elements, and you know, it's like they we all the stars all lined sure. up. You know, timing and it all came yeah. together. Right. Um, you know, we uh, also the restaurants are built rather well, um, and. Uh, Look, you know, sometimes you stray from the farm, you know, you go to a different uh, designer or builder and then you wind up going back because uh, you know, the people that you work with and had the most success with are the ones that you tend to gravitate back to. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So within the food industry, did you ever know Julia Child? I did, actually. Oh, yeah. and what are some fun memories? Well, Julia Child, actually, I had a restaurant in the Sony building yes. and she had never met Emeril Lagasse. And Emeril was at his height, and you know, it was kind of like, you know, people were trying to figure out was is Emeril the anti Julia Child? But Emeril's a terrific person, and so they got along famously, and they, um, you know, they had a they had a dinner at, at the restaurant. But at the we had a 
a movie premiere that night. It, it was called the Berkeley Bar and Grill. And uh, Robin Williams was in this movie. It was called Jacob's, uh, I think it's called Jacob's Liar, or something mm -hmm. like that fashion. It was an obscure film, but Robin Williams came in and he see, and Robin Williams is quite a foodie and he sees Julia and Emeril. And I was trying to get them out because the premiere party was about to start. And Robin comes up to Julia and says, oh, you know, he's kvelling over her. And, um, <laughs> When he stopped and they started walking, I heard Julia say, who was that man? <laughs> you know, she had no idea that it was Robin Williams. That's one thing, but um, then... Uh... Yeah, we should do. We should actually have, every single time we have a kitchen chat, it seems that someone does a Julia Child yes. impression. Yes. We should, have, we should do a, a sizzle reel Definitely. of all the Julia Child impressions you know, that happen on kitchen chat. At, at the very beginning of the Food Network, um, they, they actually, had Julia Child interview me, and I, I was in a, she interviewed me on a show called uh, uh, What's Happening in Food Today or something of that nature, and it was a show that was uh, David Rosengarten did, and um, there was one part I'll never forget, you know, they said, well, we want to do some beauty shots. I didn't know what a beauty shot was. You, you know what a beauty shot is? I look every day. Yeah, so, so they said, just, just, just let Julia, you know, and so she's looking at me, and she's, she started with the lips, and like, like, you know, she's <laughs> flirting with me. I was like, wow, this is great. So I, I believe like, it or not, I have this incredible, uh, and then of course when she died, Nora Ephron did a film called Julie, Julia, and Julia. Julia, yeah. And um, I, I was a good friend of Nora Ephron's, and actually she was still alive. Was, uh, the movie, she wrote the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, at the after party, we did Boeuf Bourguignon which was Beef Boogie you know, <laughs> but we did a good one and, uh, and we got the Nora Ephron seal of approval. But uh, no, Julia Child was one of a kind. She was a terrific person. I've been to her house in Cambridge. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. astounding, yes. the ripple effect of Julia yes. Child. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's like, wait, there's, it's not even a ripple effect, it's like waves. Well, I mean, I mean, and Dan Aykroyd on Saturday Night Live doing the... Yeah. Oh, you know, yes, the that fish blender. That was the greatest thing <laughs> yes. ever. That Very funny. That's great. Aww. And was there anyone else within the culinary side that, that I think there's been everybody. Much? You know, I was trying to figure this out the other day. I was like, who haven't I met, you know? Because I have pictures with uh, Muhammad Ali and... Uh, Let's throw some names out there. Madonna. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, you know, Madonna was married to Sean Penn. Correct. So she came to Tribeca Grill. Do I look a little like Sean Penn? Of course. <laughs> I don't know if you want to look like. I know. He's, and do I look like Madonna? I was thinking about it the other day, like like yesterday <laughs> at the Apollo. Like you know, they opened the film festival with the uh, documentary called The Apollo, and we were all at the Apollo Theater, and I was right next to Taneshi Coates, who's huh. a you know like a modern day James Baldwin, and then when the film starts, the the film begins and ends with Taneshi Coates. Basically, they read his book at the Apollo. They they do an enactment, and I was like, you know, my wife absolutely adores Taneshi, so. You know, that was, a, that was a kick. Smokey Robinson was sitting behind me. I mean, it was amazing. Um, but, you know, that's, you know, when you're partners with Robert De Niro, I think you're gonna tend to you know, meet a lot of really sure. interesting yes. people. Um, yes. But Bill Murray is a terrific partner. Uh, obviously, Robin Williams was, Robin Williams is just a pure mensch. Today, I sat at a table with uh, Rob Reiner and his, and his wife, Michelle, and their kids. and. Uh, Harry Shearer, who does 24 voices on The Simpsons. I mean, that was amazing. And, uh, you must have so many great. moments like yeah, that no, you can I look mean, back on. And 29,000 yeah. pictures yeah, on the yeah, phone. Yeah. I have a lot of pictures. I was like <laughs> looking the other day, and I saw a picture I, that I didn't recall, but I was with James Taylor, who I absolutely adore. I love James Taylor. And I lo yeah, I love music, too. So. Yeah, so do I. I travel with most of, I'm a personal chef, too. Oh. Every, everybody you can imagine. I travel with Steven Tyler, Sting, oh, Madonna, all kinds of people. Sting, Sting is amazing. Too. He's, the, yes. he's the best, truly. Is there any moment, though, that really, truly stands out that you just like go back to in your life and think that, ha that happened? Well, when I was a young man, uh, it was like 1982. Uh, I was the general manager in the village of a restaurant called 24 Fifth Avenue, and James Beard came in. And it was very, you know, he, he had gout, so he walked very slowly, and then he sat down and he ordered a uh, Manhattan Neat. And I I'd never heard that phrase. I didn't know what Neat meant, but I, obviously I learned you know, neat, neat meant no ice or whatever it, it meant. Anyway, the next time he came in, you know, I just went over to him and I said, um, you know, nice to have you back, Mr. Beer, would you like a Manhattan Neat? And he did, like, 
You know, like it, it was like one of those things where he like he acknowledged that that was service. Yeah. What I had just done, and you know, it wasn't too premeditated. It was just a normal thing. And really, our business is about anticipating the guest's needs. If we can think for the guest, you know, the guest never has to say, "I, I can you please bring me?" Can you, you know? Every time there's a, um, the guest has to ask you for something. You know, it's it, it, it's it's troublesome. So when you know, what do we do? We give them bread. We give them water. We give them a menu. You know, so we we try to make it easier on the guests. So I think just anticipating the guest needs in a service way. And James Beard, of course, turned out to be a legend, so amazing person. That is incredible. But, you know, we just stories. did a party for, I don't know how many times we've done this party. Uh, Bruce Springsteen, uh, his manager, we do a charity for them. And, you know, Bruce had, hadn't played um, music since his Broadway shows. He did 200 plus Broadway shows. It just, there was just, he just, he was in the mood, he was at Tribeca, and then he got on stage and he played two songs. So, I mean, things like that are pretty amazing. That is incredible. And you mentioned something so important, and you have such a huge heart for charity, and you make yeah, such no, a difference. Yeah, we do a lot of charity, charity yeah, of course. I mean, he, just the, the one thing I've noticed is the people in the food business are, are not only charitable, but they're nice people. I mean, um, you see other industries, I, you know, I'm close to the movie industry, I'm close to the fashion. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of phony baloney, but the restaurant business is pretty true blue. People are pretty, pretty nice. Yes. Do you have a tip for somebody that's in the restaurant business that may be either young or struggling or... Get out while you can. <laughs> no, <laughs> See, there it is. That's my tip. No, um, no, I would just say it's, you know, it might sound like a cliche, but it's a marathon. It's not a, a race. You have to, you know, when I look over my shoulder, I mean, I'm 63. I, I've been doing it, you know since I was owning restaurants since I was 29. So, you know, for the better part of 33 years, and it, I don't know where the, all that time goes, but essentially, I think the most important thing is you come to work and you're the same person. You, you, if you come to work and you're a different person and you know, you, you start trying to make yourself important, that doesn't really work. Such good Just advice. Just try to be uh, consistent. Mm -hmm. Good advice. Wow. And consistency causes success, and you right. have like you have to calibrate all of your stoves here <laughs> because if you put something in and you turn it to four hundred and it's not four hundred, you're gonna have problems. So, I mean, it, 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 consistent temperature. You have to rely on things. You yeah, know, there are things that you you have to rely on, but um, and also you know just associate yourself with the best products and the best people. That's that's key. That is great. Wonderful advice here and incredible stories. Now, right. I always like to ask the guests, what is your most special taste memory from childhood? And does your, any, do any of your restaurants feature that dish that brings you back home? Yeah, that's, that's really kind of a, a, a good thought. Um, I'd like to live in a world of all kinds of ethnic foods. So, I mean, I, I do have very clear taste memories as a child of certain dishes. But when I was coming up in the, in, in the restaurant business, the worst thing you could do is to tell a chef how to, what, you know, hand a chef a, a recipe or say, I want you to cook this. You really, you, know, you, you sort of want that dish, but you want to sort of say, you want to talk about it and you want them to adopt it. Yeah. Or one day they're gonna come and say, you know, you used to talk to me about this thing and I blah, blah, blah. blah. Even today, I mean, like, you know, we had this sort of 130 people for lunch. It was a very simple luncheon, choice of a pasta and a seafood salad. But, you know, I don't know how many times I was like, can you make sure you do it? Make sure. And, you know, you get maybe 75% of what you ask for. I mean, even this late in my career, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing. But, you know, you, when people are talented, they, especially now, they really, it's very hard for them to take direction. It, 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 you know, you say, you know, you have the meetings and then it just, things happen the way they happen, so. Hmm. But I'm content, I uh, had a terrific career, collaborated with a lot of great people. And, you know, if you haven't eaten my restaurants, you better, you better check them out. <laughs> Absolutely. 29 years. Wow. Oh. Well, congratulations on all Thank that you've done and that you continue to do. Thank and you. it is just such an honor to have you on Kitchen Chat. No, thank, thank you for you. having me. This was a lot of fun. Thank oh, you very much. Thank you. And thank you, Jamie. The pleasure is all mine. Them. To meet people like this is a, is a dream. So Truly thank you, Margaret. Thank a you. highlight milestone in my culinary journey thank here. You.
And thank you, dear foodie friends, for joining the fun here on Kitchen Chat. I hope that you will come visit um, the showroom. It'll be residential here in New York City in the A&D building. And also come visit Chef Jamie Larita in the showroom. It'll be residential showroom in Chicago at the Merchandise Mart. You never know what's going on in the background. We've got a big crowd <laughs> a lot behind of us. Lots of cooking going on. <laughs> yes. And also, for more kitchen inspiration, visit thevikinglife.com. And then come visit me in my kitchen at kitchenchat.info. <laughs> and always remember to take a moment and savor the day.